Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> Going. Oh, slow today. Oh, I wouldn't kick about that. Uh, Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Where are you going on your vacation? No place. I'm going to paint the house. Some vacation? Yeah. House needs painting. Peeling pretty bad. Hey, need any brushes? Oh, thanks, Quine. Neighbors don't loan them to me. Uh, hey, I have your attention, please. You, uh, people out there have on the other side of the wire in the mm-hmm. audience room. No, yeah, I have no, your just attention. thought I'd watch cargo work. Thank you. How's for lunch? My okay. name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. Now, the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All the way to the end of the stage, boys. Keep it moving all the way. You, you in front there. Me? You mean me? Yes, you. Over here, this end of the stage. Now get over here. All right, now turn and face the front. You again. Me? Yes, the front. Face the screen. Uh, Stop talking in the line. You, number one, shut up. Okay, okay. All right, number one. Tony Lascelli, alias Tom Leslie, 12 arrests, three convictions. Probation, six months on the first sentence, three years on the second. Car theft and robbery. Step out, Lascelli. I said, step out. To where? You've been in lineups enough to do it blindfolded. Now, step out. Uh, this suit you? Where do you live? In a dump. With my old man. What's the address, Tony? I don't know. Someplace in the Bronx. What's the address, Tony? I ain't been here in six or seven years. How do you think I'm going to remember all that? What's your age, Tony? Twenty-three. And I'm tired of getting pushed around by you guys. I'm not asking your opinion. I just want facts. Well, that's a fact. Where do you live here? Here. Been this stinking town two hours. Cop picked me up too fast, even ran a park bench. You want it in St. Louis, Denver, Phoenix, and Los Angeles? Yeah, I get around, huh? The charges went from suspicion of armed robbery to assault with a deadly weapon, a knife. Oh, nuts. I only nicked them. What brought you to this town? Guy had a job for me. What kind of job? Well, I guess he'd call it a bill collect. Explain it. Well, this guy wins three G's in a game and don't collect. So he wants I should collect for him. Who hired you? Got him already. He's down the line there. Number six, Ronnie Dowling? Yeah, that's him. I hope you have a pleasant stay with us, Tony. Now, we'll see if we do better with you. Number two, Thomas Vincent. Open charge. Step into the circle. Where do you live, Thomas? Well, 6,000 Parkway Terrace. Is that a house? Well, it's an apartment hotel. I'm in apartment C. What do you do for a living? Uh, That's on the third floor, apartment C. Thank you, Thomas. Now, what do you do for a living? Nothing. You live in a pretty expensive neighborhood. Oh, boy, you're telling me. What do you do for a living? You asked me that once. I didn't like your answer. <clears throat> well? Well, what? What do you do for a living? I told you, nothing. What do you do for a living, Thomas? I... I keep books. What you mean is you make books. Yeah, yeah. I'm a booker. Where were you arrested, Thomas? In a bar. What bar? Where? I don't know the name. Yeah, we're wanted in robbery, did Okay. Nixon Grill. Henry. Yeah, that's it. have any weapons? Weapons? Oh, boy. Cargus, you had it today. So did a couple of other guys. Oh, who? Two bank tellers. Dead. Where? Three guys took the National Trust Bank. Submachine guns. Tore up the place. <laughs> That's pretty nasty in there. Yeah, I expect. You're pretty well organized out here? Yeah, I'll have some more men here in a minute. 
They're roping off the side entrance now. Okay, rope it off here, too. Mally's setting it. The area covered? Yeah, it's tight. Okay, let's go in. Right. Mally, set that rope all the way. Hey, you folks here, keep moving right along, please. <coughs> Come on, now, move along. What kind of a car do they use? Well, we don't know yet. We're checking witnesses. Move along, everybody. Keep moving. There's nothing to see. They come out here? Uh uh. Side entrance. All right, now move along. Hello, Ben. Hi, Doc. Asha says it's rough. Oh, brutal. I haven't seen men chopped up like that since the service. How many? Two men, tellers. They must have caught, oh, 30 slugs. The bank guard got hit pretty hard, too. He tried to stop him. Mm. Over there? Yeah. Shoulder and arm torn up. Tellers are down here. They really had it. Mm. They'll cover them up. Lab men aren't through with their pictures. Oh, all right. I've given sedatives to the girl over there, hysterical. Yeah, I can understand that. Is the manager of the bank here? No, oh, that's him over there, Ben. Name's Thomas Franklin. Oh, all right. Uh, get the employees into his office. Keep the others over there. Right. And Asher? Yeah, Ben. Have the officials take account on what money's left. Oh, they're working on it now. Uh, Doc, uh, can I talk to the guard? I'm going to try. Dr. Walters is working on it. Mm-hmm. You better make it fast, Ben. Right. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, missed him. Clear shot. I missed. You get a good look at them? Hit the alarm. Get police here. Now, the police are here. Are you sure you missed? Yeah. He's, uh, he's hit hard, Ben. Yeah, he sure tried. Couple of ambulances in front, Doc. Okay, let's get this man on the way. Keep that plasma going. Think he'll make it, Doc? He'll lose that arm anyway. The teller's over there? Yeah. What's left of them? But, Doc, uh, I want your lab reports as soon as possible. Slugs and cartridge cases. We'll try for a make on the guns. All right, I'll get on the slugs, man. They're really unloaded, huh? A yeah, hundred rounds at least. Oh. That's a tough way to get it. You know a good way? Where's Mr. Franklin's office, Doc? Oh, over there. Quine, let's go. Mr. Franklin? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Quine. Yes? I'd like to ask some questions, if you don't mind. Yes, of course. Sit down. Thank you. Terrible thing. Terrible. Uh, Tell me, uh, where were you when this happened? Uh, Here. That is, I was standing at the door here. Uh, Door to your office? Yes, I was talking to Miss Haynes. She's my secretary. Uh, did uh, you see them come in? I saw them. There were three men. Boy, can you describe them? Uh, well, no, I, I thought they were orchestra men. Orchestra? Well, how well, do you mean? They were all dressed alike. Suits, hats, ties, all matched. Uh-huh. Uh, what about the features? Well, I, I, I don't know. They all looked alike, too. Well, you mean their faces? Yes, they're all the same. I thought I was dreaming. Uh, were you close enough to notice if they wore masks or makeup? It was like a dream, a horrible nightmare. I, I... What? The lieutenant asked if they wore masks or makeup. Well, I... I don't know. Everything happened so fast. I... And then Lee and Joe, when they seemed to... Just to tear apart. I, I've never seen anything like that. I, I guess I... I fainted, I guess. Well, it's a natural reaction, Mr. Franklin. You needn't what? feel ashamed. Well, I do, though. I can't help it. Folks, Lee's wife is expecting a baby. I'll I'll have to call her and tell her. Get Dr. Carson Quine, sure. Now, look, the police are taking care of telling the family, Mr. Franklin. Those gunmen killing like that. The police are taking care of that, too, Mr. Franklin. I looked at him and then he See what you can do, Doc. Uh Oh, Please call Lee's wife. Let's get him on the divan. Yeah, right. I'll give him a hypo. Right. Take off the coat, no, please. Is Mr. Franklin all right? Yeah. Uh, nasty shock for a man his age. The doctor's taking care of him. Hi, Miss Haynes, the secretary. May I help? Uh, Lieutenant Guthrie, Miss Haynes. Uh, I'd like to ask some questions, if of you don't course. mind. Uh, did you see the man? Oh, yes. Uh, how close were they? Mr. Franklin and I were talking there at the door. I guess I was 20 feet from the nearest one. Uh, can you describe the men, the clothes, features, voices, anything like that? Yes. 
tell the truth, I was so scared I couldn't think. Well, how were they dressed? They all wore dark brown suits and brown felt hats. They all matched with the same style and material and everything. I didn't pay much attention at first, that is. Oh, well, why not? Uh, isn't it unusual to see three men all dressed alike? No, not around here. We have some theatrical agencies in the building and all kinds of odd characters come and go. I guess I just thought they were a combo. Uh, a combo? Uh, yes, you know, a small musical group. Oh, oh, yes. Well, what about their features? Well, I remember I started to turn back to my desk when I realized they all looked alike. I mean, their faces were all the same. And and I saw Mr. Franklin staring so funny. And then I heard the guns. Their faces were all alike? Yes, like mad. Uh-huh. Excuse me, Pat. We've got to leave. Uh, just a second, please. Uh, what kind of mask, Miss Haynes? Well, I'm not really sure that's what they were. Well... Were the faces like Halloween masks? Well, yes, only they weren't so grotesque. Well, they sell that kind too, Miss Haynes. Uh, excuse me a moment, please. Yes, sure. Uh, what do you have for him? I should find a dead man down the Broadway cable tunnel. Gunman? Yeah. Oh, the guard thought he'd missed. He didn't. Hit him pretty hard. Finally stopped him, huh? Uh-uh. His buddies knocked him off. Two and a half. Let's have a look. Out this way. Big telephone company work canvas stretched around a cable intake at the side entrance. Uh-huh. And what did the phone men say? No phone men there. A bunch of equipment laying around. Down this way, Ben. Yeah, he started to bleed here. Uh-huh. Out of the bank. On his work canvas down that manhole. Sure no fuss with a getaway car. More blood here. Hmm. Mally, call in. Get the phone people down here on the double. Let's go. Don't slip on that ladder. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Frank, what you're standing Give me a hand here. Hand me that flashlight. Yeah. Uh, this puts us on the Broadway. Runs north and south. Turn your flash on. Right. We're down this way. Uh, a bigger tunnel than I thought. Yeah, it carries all communications and power. Watch these pipes. Yeah. Oh! I told you to watch the pipe. I know it. I know it. How far have we come? About 50 yards. Well, he's up here. Oh. I'll hold the lights steady. Oh, yeah. God caught him in the side. His partner sure messed him up. Can't tell much what he looked like. We'll get a make off the prints. They had it figured pretty good. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Then? Eh? Yeah. I could use an aspirin. <laughs> in the Ground Observers Corps. Scan our skies in short volunteer periods and fill up the holes in our radar defenses. Intercontinental war is possible. A fully manned Ground Observer Corps is the best answer for now. To enroll, phone or write your local Civil Defense Center or write Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, D.C. That's your local Civil Defense Center or Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Coming. They change clothes here. Uh, beginning to figure. Yeah. Two suits, two masks. Uh huh. More of these over something else. Yeah. There are exits down there. Mm hmm. Hey. You see daylight. Yeah, the uh, tunnel takes the right angle. Hey, look out for these beams. Now you tell me. You hurt? I tore my pants. Oh. Hey, what are you guys doing down there? Oh, hi, Pete. Here, grab my hand. All right. Yeah. Still sore, Pete? Sore? Oh, you mean the lineup. <laughs> Those guys had me going. <laughs> they sure did. Yeah. Phone equipment here, too, huh? Uh, where are we? Uh, alley parallel to Main and off Second. Second? That's two blocks from the bank. Yeah. Uh, Pete, see if the telephone people have gotten to the bank yet. If they have, get them down here. Right. Oh, say, Quine, you tore your pants. I know it. I got a headache, too. He's over here, Mr. Davis. Van? Yeah. 
Yeah? This was the Davis Division foreman of the phone company, Lieutenant Guthrie. Hello, Mr. Davis. I got your call, Lieutenant. Came right over. Uh, thank you. Were you at the bank? Stopped there first. Certainly a tragedy. Yeah. Now, tell me, is that equipment down there yours? Oh, sure. Belongs to Truck 37. It's assigned to Jimmy Willard's crew. Now, how long has Willard been with the company? Twelve years. Good man. I hardly think he's mixed up in this. Well, somebody with cable experience is in on it. Has to be. Yes, you're right. I've ordered all drivers to report in. Oh, good. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Davis. The lineman over there is holding a call from your office. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Uh, sure. Uh, Cargo, will you follow through on that guy? Tell him to rush the identification. Sure, man. I put out an APB on this truck. Here's a card. All right. Yeah, I guess that's all we can do here, Ben. Yeah. Lieutenant Guthrie. Uh, yes, Mr. Davis. Uh, it's the office. They found the truck driver, Jimmy Willard. He's in the hospital. Been slugged. Now, get over there, Quine. Now, what time is it, Quine? Uh, five after two. Oh, no wonder I'm hungry. I'm right through lunch. Well, Pete's bringing some sandwiches. Good. What'd you get at the hospital? Oh, well, Willard's still foggy. Took a pretty bad beating. Thinks it's a guy named Fritzy Morris. Morris? A telephone man? It was. Got fired. Troublemaker. Crockett's checking the file. Good. Oh, well, we found that phone company truck. Well, yeah, where? It's at the bottom of Lost Lake. Lost Lake in the uh, state park? Mm hmm. Two kids phoned in about 20 minutes ago, said a guy drove it up to the cliff, got out, and let it roll into the lake. Oh, that's a break. Well, who's on it? Asher. He's got a crew up there now. Kids were pretty excited. Oh, that? It was kind of funny. Kids figured on getting a tanning. Oh, playing hook? Yeah. Took them two hours to get up the nerve to call in. Two hours? The hoods must have driven straight out to the lake. Mm hmm. Then the guy drove away in a black Chevy coupe. License? No, they didn't get that. Well, where are the kids now? Asher's buying them chocolate sodas. And what did you find out? Uh, here's a make. Gumman's got a record a mile long. Name's Miller, Frank Miller. Armed robbery. Got out four weeks ago. Hey, got onions on him. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah, he's yours. Ketchup and milk. Lieutenant Guthrie. Ben, this is Asher. Uh, hi. They get the truck out? Yeah, there's a dead man in it. Two slugs in the head. And he leads? Yeah. Guy's billfold has a rent receipt in it. Made out to Paul Morris, dated two weeks ago. Apartment 2B on West Palmer Drive. The address is 1327. 1327 West Palmer Drive, Apartment 2B. You set a stakeout? They're on their way. Good. We'll meet you there. shouldn't have eaten that onion. Oh, I thought you liked onions. I do. They don't like me. Oh. oh here's Asher. Yeah. Blocks closed tight, Ben. Good. Your stakeout set here? Three on each side, six in the back. We're covering the front. We seen anyone in the apartment? Uh-uh. There's a Chevy in the garage registered to Morris. Okay. We'll check the manager first. Charles Carter. Just a minute. Yes? Mrs. Carter? Yes. Uh, we're police officers, Mrs. Carter. We'd like to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. Police? Why, my goodness, what's wrong? We're looking for someone, Miss Carter. Oh? Has anyone moved into the building recently? Well, only those two men in 2B. They moved in about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Can you describe them? Oh, yes. One's tall and dark, very handsome. Why, what have they done? Uh, you have those mug shots, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is this the man? Yes. That's Mr. Morris. Is he a crook? Among other things, yes. Pete, go get Asher. Sure. And Miss Carter, you stay in your apartment there. Maybe trouble. Oh, gracious. And keep your door locked. All right, let's go. Second floor. You'd think the place would have an elevator. Yeah. You gonna bowl tonight? Uh-uh. We drew a bye. All right, this way. Now walk easy. Easy. All right, 
cover me. Open up, Morris. Police officers. Morris, the building's surrounded. We're giving you a chance. Come out with your hands up. Hit the lock, Asher. Stand back. Let him have it. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I got plaster all over me. Boy, he really had an armory here. Oh, come here, man. Huh? Oh, there's the money. He must have been counting it. Yeah. Ben. Huh? You been eating onions? Yeah. Want some gum? Oh, thanks. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call out the number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please come on. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by William J. Ratcliffe, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Peter Leeds, Tony Barrett, Howard McNear, Sidney Miller, John McIntyre, and Jeanette Nolan. The lineup was produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Never doubt the impact of radio, and especially CBS Radio, or its legions of listeners across the land. The last time anyone counted, there were over 105 million radio sets in America, and people really used them. How else could a phenomenon like this take place? Next Tuesday night in California, Gene Herschel will receive an honorary M.D. degree, awarded to him in recognition of 15 years as Country Doctor on CBS Radio's Dr. Christian series. Radio, and especially CBS Radio, where America listens most, is proud to carry on its leading role in bringing America news, public service programs, and diversion day and night. Dan Coverly speaking, and remember, America listens most to the CBS Radio Network.